Lady Power. The Ownerless World. By Anthony Kuntz. Reading done aloud by an artificial intelligence named Phoenix. Advice from Ramiro Reynoga, indigenous leader, during the visit of Pope John Paul II to Bolivia in 1985. John Paul II, on the occasion of your visit. We, Andean and American Indians, are returning your Bible to you. For over five centuries, it has given us neither love nor peace nor justice. Please take your Bible back and give it to our oppressors. They need moral teachings more than we do. A Portrait of the End of Time a frequent observation heard in international councils was that Muslims were not known to go without food. In those regions, unlike other countries or nations, charity wasn't the business of state or institutions but rather a direct obligation for citizens, and begging was a respectable profession. In the West, a majority of insolvent states, full of millionaires, entrusted their economic administration to a supranational entity the Justice Foundation. This organization had no access to any of Islam's philanthropic organizations nor did it have any direct control over the fortunes made under Muhammad's influence. While in Islam no competition existed when it came to charity, in continental America and Europe, state treasuries were full, preventing any end to poverty in the Southern Hemisphere. William Friedrich Justices had personally obtained approval from the governments of the United States, Canada, and Mexico for legislation, which stated that citizens who contributed to his foundation were exempt from paying income tax. Of the nine and a half billion people living in the world, more than half suffered from serious malnutrition. Negative demographic growth had begun a decade earlier and privileged people admitted that this was the best natural response for mankind's survival. Unfortunately, the decline in population was slower than the decline in production. The Justice Foundation, counting on the fact that over time even greater numbers of people would become poor, managed to distribute wealth by selecting residual families from Protestant and Catholic conglomerates. The foundation's power came from private funds that protected family inheritance. This business idea had come about from the need to protect these families' children and grandchildren from growing famine in the states as well as declining currencies. By substituting state law and authority with street morality and justice in various countries, the Justice Foundation believed that a decrease in the birth rate would help balance the ecology. However, it did not use biochemical or physical contraceptive methods to finance its control. The poor have the right to be born was one of its advertising slogans. What's more, in a world divided ever since the financial collapse of the 2030s, the foundation's dominance was almost total since it was limited exclusively to countries of Christian tradition. Due to Islamic expansion, Theocratic nations under Sharia law were not allowed to benefit from any of the foundation's programs, instead, they were at the mercy of mass genetic experiments developed in China and Japan. The legend about paradise no longer existed. Consequently, in the middle of the 21st century, the Western Hemisphere was in ruins, the Middle East was at peace, and a large part of Asia and Oceania was experiencing economic balance. The history of the world was continuing naturally but in the near future, seven giant, armed aircraft carriers would be paralyzed in the Pacific Ocean as they faced a fleet of armored, dark spheres floating in the sky. History was about to be changed forever. Anno Domini 2045 By opening her moist, sweaty legs, Melina Evren had given the best of herself to Juan, Carlos, Pericles, Hugo, Smith, Mussolini, and the most outstanding men ever since she was 13 years old. She drove her lovers crazy with her smooth ass, sculpted nipples, and wide, welcoming mouth. Some of them, the most submissive ones, succumbed at a mere glance from her. 
And that's how Melina managed to become the first lady on August 8 at the age of 38 showing no signs of cellulite, wrinkles, stretch marks or even a belly.